Hey, what's going on guys? It's Dewey here with Team Fire Spin, about to profile my DDD deck. Uh, pretty much when we went to the uh, sneak peek, uh, I didn't realize that these were actually coming out in the set, but uh, after my Shadals got kind of destroyed, had to pick up something new, so opened up the pack, saw these were in there, and I said, you know what, fuck it, let's build DDDs. And so here it is, I uh, finally got it finished, so gonna show you all the deck and uh, kind of what it does. So let's get into it. All right, start off, uh, we have three DD Savant Kepler. Uh, it's basically the search guy, it gets you all the spell and traps. Uh, you wanna see this guy as quickly as possible for all your combos to go off, so definitely crucial for the deck. Three DD Swirl Slime. Uh, this is like doubly important, it lets you fusion out uh, the most important fusion in the deck, and it also helps you facilitate the rank 8 play, which I'll go into a little bit later. But yeah, this guy, you definitely need to play three of him, for now at least. Three, DD King Abyss Ragnarok. Uh, it's the level 8 guy, he's really powerful. Uh, whenever he gets special summon, he gets you another one out of the grave. Uh, later on, you might play a few less of him, but for now, you have to play three. There's just not enough, uh, there's not enough cards in the archetype at the moment to play less, and, uh, the rank eight is pretty dumb, so just being able to go into that as many times as possible, obviously you want to do that, so three of him is necessary. Three DD King Rebel Leonidas. So, this guy, uh, um, helps you with your, uh, with your contract cards when they burn you during your standby phase. Uh, you can just kind of special summon him out of your hand, you gain back the life points, and then you actually don't take any damage while he's on the field. So that's definitely uh, crucial for this deck because all of your spell and traps damage you, so you want to prevent that as much as possible and still reap the benefits. So obviously you would play three of that. Two DD Burfamet. Uh, this guy's pretty good. Uh, he helps you get into the rank 4, the King Caesar guy. Uh, his, the only drawback with him is that once you use his effect, you can't go into anything else but DD monsters. So that's why it's not as good as it could have been. But you know what? Uh, all the DD cards are really good. So just play two of him. Uh, two DD Necro Slime. It's not as good as the other Slime one. And that's why you don't play as many, but, uh, it's still really good to get into the grave early and kind of use to fusion from the grave. Uh, it can really help you out. Uh, one DD Savant Galilee. Galilee. Uh, this is the worst one of all of them that are out right now, and, uh, you don't really want to see this in your hand ever. Um, when you do see it, it kind of helps you get around, like, stuff like MSTs or or effect veilers, because when you discard them from your hand, you bounce uh, either a DD monster or a dark contract back to your hand, so it helps you play around those things. Uh, but other than those specific situations, it's kind of bad, so you don't want to play a whole lot of him. Uh, but he definitely helps out in certain situations, so one is fine. Three Upstar Goblin, so the 37 card deck theory. It's re you really want to get to the combo pieces in this deck, you don't want to be messing around too much with all the other things, so... Three Upstar Goblins, definitely necessary. Three Mystical Space Typhoon. Um, a lot of pendulum based decks running around right now. I uh, don't want to deal a whole lot with back row. Don't want your effects to get stopped by something like Fiendish Chain or Skill Drain or anything like that. Um, just helps you out with like not getting floodgated and all that stuff. And you actually have space in this deck to keep it in the main deck. Three Dark Contract with the Gate. Uh, it's your monster searcher. It lets you search out any monster in the main deck. And uh, that's really important because the advantage from that can build up pretty quickly um, if you get out the fusion monsters so and stuff to where you don't take any damage. So having this out as soon as possible is key to winning with this deck. And if it sits on the board for a good length of time, uh, you can just start building up advantage and killing your opponent quicker. Two Dark Contract with the Swamp King. Um, this one's really important, and it's the Fusion uh, Contract card where you can fuse from uh, either your hand, main deck, or graveyard for your DD monsters, which is really key. Uh, it's actually the only way that you can get out the big Fusion guy. Um, this one. It's the only way you can get that card out, so 
Obviously, that's really important. And... Anyways. Um, and, you know, that's really key for this deck. And getting him out can cause a lot of big tempo swings. And I play double trade-in. Uh, this is another thing uh, with the level 8 guy in the main deck. Uh, you want to get one copy of him in the grave so you can get to the rank 8. Um, so it definitely helps with that. It also helps with consistency. 2 is pretty good. Uh, you don't really want 3 because you're not like drawing into him that much. But uh, the fact that you can actually search out the level 8 also helps with this. So if you have this in your hand, uh, you can search out the spell and then you can search him out and then use that to trade it in for two more cards and it's really good so it's it's never dead um and just being able to do that and to put it in the grave like that is really really good uh we play one for one one for one uh this is to get out the level one guy because he gets his effect if he is normal or special summon so this basically acts as a fourth copy of him and like i said before you want to see him as soon as possible so obviously you would want to play one of these Foolish Burial. Uh, a lot of cards in this deck like to be in the graveyard. The slime cards. Um, obviously, if you want to put the level 8 guy in the graveyard, there's just a lot of different things that like to be in the grave, so Foolish Burial is kind of an obvious choice. And Raigeki, of course. It's Raigeki. I mean, it's not as great this format with like Magic Specters and stuff running around, but it's always nice to kind of have that option in your deck, even if even if it's not the greatest against most of them, most of the meta, um, it helps out against Rogue and other stuff. So, I think it still warrants a spot in the main. Um, that's what I think about that for now. Three breakthrough skill. Uh, one of the toughest things this deck has matchup wise is against effects. So, like stopping key effects from your opponent uh, really kind of can kind of turn a game in your favor. So. Obviously, three of these is a must. And two, Dark Contract with the Witch. Uh, this one, uh, you flip it and you can pitch a Dark Contract or a or a DD monster from your hand uh, to destroy a card on the field, which is really good. Um, kind of like the other cards, like Trade-In and One for One, it helps you get key cards into the grave that need to be there. It also increases your monster's attack by a 1,000 during your opponent's turn, which is really good. So... Two of this is pretty pretty standard and pretty good. Uh, one dark contract with errors. This is basically the... Uh, it's basically a trap stun. Um, but you get to use it every turn. So definitely want to keep one of those in there. You can even side a few. I haven't really uh, built a side deck for this deck just, uh, just yet. But um, probably going to side an extra copy of this. This is definitely a great card. And the last card in the deck, uh, Vanity's Emptiness, can't go anywhere without it. Uh, it's one of the most powerful continuous traps in the game, so obviously you'd play one of these to lock your opponent out. Yeah. Moving on to the extra deck, you start off with 3 DDD Oracle King Diarc. Uh, it's the most important fusion in the deck. Um, basically, you can bring him out with the slime monsters and... Uh, Every time that your Dark Contract cards would inflict damage to you, you actually gain the life points instead. Uh, which, if that, the more turns that happens, the less likely it is that your opponent will win. So, just being able to get the free advantage from the cards is on top of gaining the life points instead of taking damage can really start racking up quickly. And uh, it just spirals out of control from there. Two of DDD King Oblivion King Caesar Ragnarok. Um, this guy is really really good in certain situations. Um, he doesn't have like a an ef an effect to stop the damage for the life points, but he can create massive swings. His effect actually does not target. So um, when you attack with him, basically what he does is you return a DD or a Dark Contract card on your field to your hand. And you gain, you gain one of your opponent's monsters as an equip. Uh, there have to be two monsters on your opponent's field to do it. Um, but basically, if there's two monsters and you attack one, it takes the other one. It doesn't target, so you can get things like uh, Leo or even one of the more relevant cards like the Cosmo 
the Cosmo big ships, you can take them, even though they say you can't target them. You can take Magic Specter cards. Um, it's just really, really good. Three DD D King Wave or Wave King Caesar. Um, I mostly played three of him just because <clears throat> you can't get anything uh, but DDD monsters with the uh, with the Burfamet. So there's not really much point to playing a whole lot of a whole lot of rank fours other than DD cards. So uh, right now there's and right now there's just not a lot of DD cards out. So right now I'm playing three of this. Probably gonna change once the new newer support comes out. But for now it's just three of this guy. Two DDD Don King Kaliuga. This is the most ridiculous card in the entire deck, and one of the reasons why I wanted to build it. Um, basically he's a 3500 attack boss monster. When he comes out and hits the field, your, your opponent can no longer do anything. Um, so you have to respond to the summon uh, and stop the summon before he comes out or else you cannot do anything at all. Um, so once he hits the board, uh, other cards and effects cannot be activated and the cards effects on the field are negated. So basically like what I said, you can't do anything once he comes out. And then he also, uh, one of his effects, that wasn't even like an effect t to detach anything. So his effects, uh, once per turn you can detach a material and destroy all spell and traps on the field. So that in that's during either player's turn. Um, so it's basically a heavy storm on legs during either player's turn, which gets really ridiculous, uh, especially with pendulum-based stacks and stuff. Basically, if you get this out versus a pendulous, a pendulum base deck is almost a certain GG. Um, and then his other, the other effect of his that you don't really use as much, but you can in kind of a an iffy spot is you can detach one to set a dark contract card from your grave to your to your side of the field. So, like you don't use that effect as much, but it can kind of help you out in like a pinch. Uh, one Dweller, uh, one Emerald, one Castell, and one Masquerade. Alright, so I'm just going to run down kind of one of the combos that the deck has. Um, it's kind of a generic opening hand. The fifth card doesn't really matter that much. Uh, but say you open a hand like this, okay? So uh, you start off with the Swirl Slime. So the Swirl Slime's effect says that you can use itself and uh, one other monster in your hand as a material for a, a fusion summon. So basically you would just uh, activate its effect and fuse it to bring out this guy. So you brought out this guy, you have him on the field. Uh, now you can use one for one and discard the King Abyss to the grave to special summon out the level one monster. And a level 1 monster um, allows you to search out the spell, uh, spell or trap. So for this combo, you want to get the, uh, the spell or trap that searches out another monster. So you get the dark contract with the gate. So you use the dark contract with the gate to get out another copy of the rank or the level 8 guy from your deck. So now you have, uh, right now your field is uh, these two guys. Uh, dark contract with a gate, and you have two cards, two cards in hand because we started off with four cards. So you have this card in your hand, and now you can use the slime effect in the graveyard. Uh, in you get to use both of its effects uh, once each per turn. So its other effect, you can banish itself to special summon a DD monster in your in your hand uh, to the field. So you would special summon the level eight guy. Now, the level 8 guy's effect allows you to special summon another DD monster from the graveyard. So you would special summon the other DD from the grave. And then when that happens, this guy's effect will allow you to special summon another monster. So you will get the level 4 out of your grave. So now you have two level 8s, the level 6, or 7, uh, the level 1 and the level 4. Uh, from here, you can do two different things. Uh, you can either tribute these two guys for each of these guys' effects to banish a monster, uh, or you can use his effect to make this a rank, f a level four, and make the rank four. 
which in my opinion is the better play here. So you make it the rank 4. And then after that, you make the rank 8. So now, out of uh, those four cards, um, you've made a rank 8 that will kill your opponent's entire back row if they didn't stop it. The level 7, which allows all of your uh, back rows to not harm you. In fact, you gain the life points. And then this guy, uh, so if they had... I mean, even if their back row wasn't going to get wiped anyways, you, you're protected from Mirror Force with this guy. Um... Because if, if they die, they all come back. So, And this is a really easy board to set up. Uh, you can get to this a ton of different ways. Um, if you have a way to get to... If you have this card, another D, the, the level 4 DD monster, and then uh, just basically this guy here. If you have those three cards, you can kind of get to it. Um, and that's really easy to do. You play three copies of everything else except for the level four. So it's really easy to get to and a really simple combo that's really, really powerful. All right, you guys. So that was the deck. Hope y'all liked it. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and everything. Check out the channel. I will be definitely putting up more videos, uh, hopefully, hopefully quicker than we've been putting them up lately. But uh, definitely look. Definitely look at the channel for more stuff, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.